going to do is use those comments as a means tendons to so the presentation is based on the uh, the risk assessment NG and we know that may have created a big part of this already. What I'll do, I'll just review the first part of men. Uh, the first part, you'll of course include the name as a big specific hole where the eye located. Uh, you know, you then give a description of the main activity product or find up here. You may have a site or perhaps maybe a workshop and office. What we normally would find here too would be the first section saying the person responsible for managing health and safety only the health and safety professional but it could be um, a director director of quality here you find the finance director having um, you know uh, ultimate responsibility for managing health and safety so most of you have gotten that um, correct as just as a note please remember that this um, sample is on the Nibosh platform you can log into Google get into Nibosh home click your subject click resources and you'll have to click um, your uh, your sample of the assessment um this, have this already correct as well you must then go on to give a brief outline on how you complete the risk assessment approximately 200 words you'll find it mostly um students will comment on doing things like um inspections walkthroughs uh, simple surveys questionnaires uh, research right what what I am finding though is that a lot of folks are put in inspections uh, that however there's not much references to approved sources so please remember to do your research um, the HSE guidances are a good source of information textbooks are a good source of information you at least need to show some depth of research here um, and again that is an addition to what you'd normally do for example the walker so look at the let's say you are looking at um, um i guess i'll stick to the example here an example of a motor vehicle repair shop again you can look at if there are any guidances on that guidances on motor vehicle repair if your industry i guess is an oil and gas industry you can simply put on the um i guess your search engine um, HSG and the GDS stands for guidance guidance is for managing um, you know maybe a hot process or so welding or oil and gas etc so you need to put in some of these and again maybe is what is what would be required that would be the second part um, this is where it starts to get good um, the, the the risk assessments so what I'll do I, w I would not um, I would not walk through all of this I don't think the video time allows me to do all of that either but just to know that you have to do this um, and maybe what are the points of correction so those that I saw so far um, they, they are going pretty good anyway um, but the short comments are uh, the first column and possibly the last column has been some short comments so what you need here for those who are seeing this for the first time you need about 10 um, you know hazards and um, you know I mean a minimum of 10 it, it could be more than 10 and the short comments have been that uh, students are given almost the same hazards more than once right so for example there will be more than one fall from height or more than one slip trips and fall what is required is actually 10 or a minimum of 10 um, different hazards and again if you are putting probably um, two of the same for example two chemical hazards or two slip examples slip trips and fall that, that that is anyway you probably need to give more than the right so I think um, a way to address this problem is that what you can do because I'm seeing that um not are not quite clear about what is a hazard and what is a hazard category so I think a good idea here may have been um, the word hazard and it should really be hazard category first and then hazard at the end right I'm trying not to mess too much with the software right so if I could just um, possibly use the board a bit here I'm not too sure if you would you'd actually see it right so if you can go and you hazard right and then just under that sorry this should have been hazard category first 
um, and just under that you're gonna put hazard this may be a way of um, you know that that may be a way of getting rid of the problem as to mixing up the difference between um, hazard and hazard categories so just a simple example of that there would have been um, you know um, for example the hazard category could be something like mechanical hazard and out of that you will get um, the hazard being um, projectiles or maybe crushing injuries right so what you need to do to sort this out is really to use your textbooks right and uh, pay attention to the different hazards they have from chapter 7 to chapter 14 because really and truly every chapter captures a different hazard right so I think this way here on, on the board anyway would have been the best way to solve the problem of you mixing up what is a hazard and what is a hazard category right um, so I am seeing that um, so that's one of the main issues the other is that most of these are, are kind of going okay I think a lot of these, these must be numbered to the action so if it's not numbered um, it's going to be a bit difficult to suggest if it has put workshop manager right but there, there, there is no number as the example has it here this is linked into the the action itself right um, the second point as well the second column should I say is also a point of concern in that um, um, some students are including um, who might be harmed they are including the consequences but they are not saying how they might be harmed so to use the example here if the hazard is dust high concentration of processed dust how the person could be harmed could be people can also get the irritant dust which can cause dermatitis in their eyes causing eye irritation and damage how the dust could affect the person so you need to make that link and see um, how the hazard could affect the person right so again if we're looking at something like um, like slip trips and fall and uh, that's the that's the hazard anyway right and you want to see how the person can be harmed you, you can probably go on to say that you know that maybe they have you know like um, a lot of uh, rags or cords or whatever that's left on the ground and um, that is the only way that workers could probably enter and exit a building and then at the end of the day you find that you know that workers do use that as a main footpath anyway so then they could get entangled right into that cord and then resulting in the slip trips and fall so you actually do need to go on to see how might the workers be harmed right so you do that um, 10 different times you you give the hazard category the hazard who might be harmed how might they be harmed and don't mix up the how with the consequences right uh, what you are already doing what further actions are required time scale and then the main point here is to link the action um, back to a responsible person right I, I think just a couple I saw um, I think some people may have um, may have flipped this a bit and that should be okay um, in, the, in that they had more of what they were doing already and then they had less of what further needs to be done now that is okay nothing is wrong with that the only thing though is that um, what I realized was that um, in reading those those um, projects um, there were more things to be done right and what was being done would have been basic for example basic PPE and basic training basic supervision and uh, there was no real emphasis on the students saying that there could have been more substitute and more or less solving the problem at the source rather than just saying PPE right so just be careful of that that you do not Right, so continue is really all the different hazards right if I come across a good one I'll stop and I'll show you um, so this may be a good one of suggesting the hazard category and the hazard again um, what you need to sort out is your textbooks right um, 
this one I'm going to try to bring this one up here safe movement of people and vehicles be in the hazard category and then this is your book for that if it's anything and you should be okay with it slips and trips you could actually research it a bit right work at height and then you have the you have the actual hazard right so be careful of that that you don't mix up the hazard category and the hazard so really um this video um which would have been what we had to do in class on saturday really would have gotten started here right so i'll uh, see how much we can get done um so from the 10 observations you have to the top we are now to prioritize three actions and the justification for their selection so i guess that is what i was saying is that if if, if you put less further actions um then i guess how would you prioritize which tree right uh nonetheless if you put your further actions you have to take our three of those actions that the person would have been prioritizing um these could be from again three different hazards altogether it could be two in the same hazard right but again you need three um highest priority or the most urgent actions so you have to be able how to judge that I guess a good way is, for example, by means of talking about the risk, the higher the risk of that hazard happening, then you have an idea that that is one of the actions. If the actions could remedy or reduce the risk, then that's one that you want to talk about. Three hazards, though, you have to go on to justify. Um, and justify, really, with Nibosh means talking about moral, legal, and financial. Um, why should those you know uh risk be be controlled right so you'd see here just an idea that what that what you see is that you'd see there's a passage here on the, that is a moral argument there's a financial argument and then to the end there is a legal argument right so um you need um really three justifications for all of them um if i can say that again it's three justification um for the actions above it's not really nine justification three by three is, is not nine is actually three justifications all together so one moral one legal one financial right so um the three justifications would of course justify all three actions on top right so um you can take a read of that and uh, see what you think about it i would probably um Let's touch them a little bit. Uh, NGG Limited has a moral duty to protect all employees. I want to see why that is so. Of course, moral simply means it's the right thing to do. Um, last line here, long-term injuries, ill health, and also likely to have um, a major impact on our workers' mental health. The mental health of all workers could also be affected if they witness or if they are witness to any injuries to other workers. So that's just a, um, a five line, you know, statement in terms of why those of us who did this, you could remember a lot about the direct and indirect cost. You could put in some of that in this. They mentioned here fees for intervention, which is also like, a, um, it could be a direct cost, I guess, if you look at it like that, right? And um, so that's the financial argument. And then of course, last being a legal argument, hey, you can use your textbooks and put in, you know, relevant laws. If it was, I guess, for example, if the hazard was, um, you know, work at height, you could use the work at height regulation. If it's manual handling, you could use the manual handling regulations. You could use practices. I think I'm seeing Kosh here, the law for chemicals or one of the laws for chemicals anyway. So you use your books for these, you put in regulation seven of Kosh, uh, more or less mention that every employer is to ensure that the exposure to substances hazardous to health is either prevented where this is not reasonably practicable adequately controlled so use a text for this you could use research for this you can put again guidances um, approved codes of practices etc so that would have wrapped up there um, the first part of that um, piece which is to suggest um, I'm trying to get this back for you here now is to suggest the just the choices and the justification must be um threefold but just remember the threefold is for all all three on top right so it's one moral one legal one financial 
right? Um, so once that is done, that's 500 to 700 words. You want to move on to the consideration of the likelihood and the probable severity of injury and ill health or harm coming out of those, um, you know, or maybe a lack of those controls not being in place for those hazards being realized, right? And then as I'm here one time, I'll talk about the last part, the script and, and, and controlling the risk, right? So you want to take the next piece of it here after that um, more legal financial justification. And you want to suggest now, you know, what is the risk, right? What is the risk of those hazards being realized? So what they did here, they would have grouped this one. That is this example. Now that if you have to do the same, you can actually do each on its own. But they suggested what is the likelihood and severity of the first hazard being realized? And then what is the likelihood severity of the second hazard being realized? So I'll read piece of this one. Uh, if something goes catastrophically wrong and GG reputation could take a serious hit, which could result in a loss of contracts, especially the insurance work, which is hidden behind the webcam there. Um, the likelihood of injuries occurring from work in and around the inspection pit is quite high. This is due to the inspection pit being in regular daily use and most mechanics carry out work in this area. The severity of the risk occurring could be fairly serious. Injuries are likely to range from minor injuries such as bruises, sprain, strains, slightly more serious or even serious injuries such as head or internal injuries. So you see, again, this is twofold. You have the likelihood and the severity. And again, this latter part would have done the same likelihood and severity of the second has it been realized. And the third, again, second and hard, sorry, second and third, really coming out from the controls that they would have chosen. But then those controls are in retrospect to the three hazards that they are talking about, right? So the next piece of this would be how effective are how effective the controls that you suggested would be in reducing the risk. So I, I don't want to go back to the top of it as yet, but um, I guess you can know that this was the first control if the, the, the person would have mentioned in this sample. So the bridge would improve working practices in the area of the inspection pit at the moment workers tend to jump from one side of the pit to the other which has obvious risk associated with it i have given a time scale of two months as this is a equipment that nobody in the business has used before the business would need to source a supplier and then arrange a delivery date it is hoped that this project will be completed well within the two months timeline right so i uh, just really what could the controls do the second country the person would have mentioned you can you can actually just look at it on your form the dust enclosure will have a major impact on the amount of dust in the area so again you're linking this back to the risk and the last one this action will have a major impact on the majority of workers have given a time scale within one month for the tool extraction system due to immediate impact this will have on reducing the amount of dust in the area and this would be like a, a local exhaust ventilation system so this this when i say quite detailed this is actually threefold if i can go back to the top now this is threefold um and possibly uh they did i guess the, the i guess the bulk of the latter part of the assignment anyway right so it's threefold and that what you had to do was to first of all um you know prioritize three actions that you would have suggested from the 10 hazards you're going to pick out three You'll have to go on to justify morally, legally, financially why those should be looked at. Um, again, and that is putting it mildly, for example, in financial, you have to make reference to good financial practices, the uh, um, fees for intervention, direct and indirect costs, legal. You have to make mention of the laws that pertain to those hazards, be it you know uh, work at height or electrical or whatever have you been once that is done when the justification is finished you have to move on to suggest um what is the likelihood and severity of the hazards being realized and then once that is done then you have to suggest how would your control reduce the risk right so um it is a lot but again if you look at each um, you know, I guess paragraph, the paragraphs themselves are not when you do, you know, the impact of, you know, the 
the three hazards likelihood and severity if we do them in turn that's three separate paragraphs the three controls as well you see it here is three separate paragraphs so I, th I think the words would build automatically for itself um the last piece of the assessment right so that that is quite a lot there the last piece of it uh it's going to get a bit easier now you must now give a review date for your rules and this date 10 to 50 words um so typically risk assessments can be reviewed on a yearly basis you can see uh 12 months some some companies say six months three months and then you know um you know uh what is review date and again why have you chosen this date again that may not have been done here but you could have said that you chose the date because it's feasible it's you know it's it's within you know the the manpower the resources of the company right you must now indicate how the risk assessment findings will be communicated including the need to know sorry including straightforward how how would you um communicate the risk assessment to the workers toolbox meeting maybe emails uh who need to know it what is the follow-up action coming out of it etc so to read this one for you i will arrange a meeting with a finance director just remember this is the person in charge of safety to go through and agree the actions in the risk assessment i will then provide a summary of the finance and actions for the workshop and store manager so again that is the who will need to know these will be emailed initially with follow-up meetings if required the findings of the risk assessment will be included in the next available toolbox talk where i would also advise the workers on the actions that are to be taken a summary of the risk assessment and the actions to be taken will also be posted in the company's internet and all workers that all workers have access to right you must not um the microphone there for a couple of um i'm not too sure right so you must now indicate how you'd follow up and carried out what you could first diary reminders for roughly four simple person which have the action to find out the progress against each action should the action not be on target for completion i'll find such as workers time to complete the action the action looks like they are not going to be completed speak to the finance director or seek to see if additional resources is available for the action actions that are very overdue i.e completion is more than six months late um will be referred to the managing director via the finance director so just um i was looking over the time there to see if the video did you know was actually continuing right i'm um, sorry for the jumbled up there for a couple of minutes it seems to be going okay right but uh, just the end of it now um you would indicate um you know how you'd follow up on the actions that you would have suggested for example setting reminders talking to responsible persons finding out why the actions are not been completed on time and this would have been your time scale anyway right um you know seek to find out why maybe that is not the case maybe time maybe human resource uh maybe take it to somebody a bit superior uh, in the company anyway right so i hope that this was a bit helpful i will do a bit of a review i'm still looking at the time my dear right um to see if everything is okay let me just attempt that review now once we could um have you know i guess the full use of um the the new nibosh uh gc2 assessment follows through the idea of um, a risk assessment that you do at your place of work um, the first pieces of it you must describe your company uh, go on to give the location or locations to be um, assessed uh, include the number of persons include any shift system that they would be followed include the activities the processes used and then in the first column also give the person who is directly responsible for health and safety of course this can be the usual health and safety professional or um second piece of it give an outline of how you'd complete the risk assessment um for example using inspections walkthrough direct observation interviews surveys 
nothing really that complicated if you're using uh, interviews or, or, or surveys maybe the simplest will do but you must also use research information for example from approved websites the HSE website being one of those um, textbooks whatever have you all of those need to be placed within this particular section as well right if we just take a look at the latter piece of of this first one you'd see uh, when assessing control measures are referred to so guidance documents and of course you give the name of them and the website as well right as I mentioned before this is actually one of the points of improvement for so our students in that we are not seeing um, much of these in fact I'm not even seeing people um, you know saying that they are using uh, GC2 um, chapter 7 to chapter 14 of the Phil Hughes and Ed Ferret textbook it, uh, if you have the new textbook that we are using remember that's um, see if I have a copy here we don't have a copy here but um, that is actually a separate book for the new um, NG students anyway so then you have an entire book uh, to use for that particular project right the rest of it is um, I want to say straightforward but it's not straightforward but of course the, the, the rest of it follows the format of a normal risk assessment you'd go on to follow the categories here um, the main point here is be careful that some folks are gory um, go on to say who could be harmed not just give the consequences but go on to say how could they be harmed right when you are given the existing controls and further controls don't mix them up and uh, don't put simple controls here and then say that there is nothing else to be done in the further controls I guess you could of course remember the control hierarchy and that will give you an idea of, of further controls to, to be done make sure that you number these because the responsible person this column I guess that you're not seeing here the, the responsible person right the last column there um the the person you, you normally have to match them to what they can do right so for example maybe the hsc could work on developing the safe system of work which is number 11 right um something i guess like maybe purchasing something could probably more or less go to the hr or the print in a company or the procurement manager right so you go through 10 you don't repeat the same thing thinking it's two but it's really one right uh, once you have given a hazard category that should be sufficient right if, if you have given a hazard category let's say from um, from mechanical hazards you can probably go to non-mechanical hazards etc right I'm, I'm seeing um part of the Nibosh logo was on my face there a couple of minutes right hopefully that that doesn't continue right um so the the end of this which is really the focus of this video because we did do a brief of this in class already right the the the, uh, the, the new piece of it would have been from here and this is kind of long though but just as a summary that this would have been what you want to do here is include your three main actions that you will have to choose from of the ten uh make sure that these are really more of the the, the I guess the high risk hazards that you're pulling these from anyway and you're going to prioritize those three actions there right you should then go on to justify why you have chosen those three hazards and you have to link these and not really link it but discuss it um, first of all morally financially and then legally right at least in that particular order because most persons know the phrase more legal right um, so be sure to look at the example here take a look at that and uh, once that is done you'd go on to consider the likelihood and severity of each of those hazards occurring um, to the company right what they did here they actually just did well one and two uh, and this paragraph the short paragraph you have four lines uh, one two three four to the end here uh, would have been sufficient to address I guess point two and point three so this would have so once you consider likelihood and severity of your three controls then you go on to say what impact your control would have in reducing the risk of your three controls right so uh, what impact does your control have in reducing the hazard that you chose there or the control that that hazard came from right so um, I'm not going to go back up on this you can look at it that this would have been a bridge would have been a recommendation and I guess the hazard may have been maybe fall into the 
this this pit or whatever it was anyway here right and so you do consider what impact your controls have on reducing that particular um hazard and then to the end of it um you know you go on to say just get this to like risk assessment be reviewed and i guess why why have you chosen that date uh last two columns you must get how the risk assessment findings will be communicated um you know direct face-to-face uh, email, intranet, toolbox meetings, etc. And then the last one, how would you follow up on the risk assessment? For example, if you would have said something needs to be purchased by a week, what do you do? So then you see who is a responsible person. If it was the safety, then you just check with the person. Has this been completed? If not, then why not? Right? So um, some famous lines to end this, I guess. I'll find out the reasons why. Um, Example, is it down to finance or is such as workers' time to complete the action? So what you all can do is to, um, not to sure if I really want to try to log on the internet with this system anyway. Um, you know, but you can log on to the Nibosh website. Um, that will select the, the folder that has it, ng2, that folder would have on it. You can actually just um, download the forms and uh, maybe you can start to tell your word count is looking as compared. So uh, feel free. Uh, remember the office is open mostly half two. Just looking up there. And um, you can get that media project. Um, you know, don't wait. Just just as you have some time, those are done and send it to me, right? Once I correct them, I would make every effort to let you know and to, um, and to send you a feedback on those um, assessments um, anyway, right? Um, so what I'll do uh, for the rest of the week, I would I want to put up also the lesson that would have been for um, Saturday. So you should probably get that by tomorrow. And uh, please remember, uh, those of us who are unfamiliar with the system, please remember that we, we are checking your attendance by your comments that you put on the video. Now, it really do have to be a big comment. If you have nothing good to say, I guess you can just put something like, um, you know, like uh, Shinny's signing in here or, you know, uh, Raymond, you know, was here or Raymond saw the video, etc. Right. But um, try to keep up to date with the work. Uh, don't let all the good work go by. Um, you know, Nibo should give us some guidance as to the exams, etc. Right, so um, uh, give us a comment. Remember, you could actually reach me at 489-2426. Um, the email address, well, it's on the Nibos website, but you can probably send it to Samuel underscore Shadrach at yahoo.com. Right, I'll, I'll stop this one here. Um, I'm not too sure if I want to um, see if I can find the Nibos page for you live on the system it, it it did seem to be given some issues anyway or some trouble anyway so i would i would stop here All right remember um you know to take care of yourself uh take care of your families um take every precautions that you all have to take under normal um conditions right and uh we'll see again uh sometime this week i'll put out a video i'll have janet uh give you a call and to let you know that the tutorial exactly um on line but on the youtube channel and of course this is general youtube all you have to do to get it for those who don't know you have to put in shadrach ayosh on youtube and you would be able to see your lesson so um just for today i'll see you all later on in the week um with another video all the best bye